What's up, City Church? We are so glad you joined us today. I bet you've heard this phrase around the city, know God, find family, discover purpose, and live in freedom. We believe one of the best ways you can do that is by joining a team here at the city. You can serve coffee, be a friendly face welcoming people in, or be a part of our incredible Sea Kids experience. These are a few of the many opportunities you can do to get more involved. Your church experience can be so much more than simply attending service on a Sunday. If you need any help taking that next step, please be sure to find a leader wearing a blue lanyard after service, or you can check out thecitychurch.org forward slash teams. Our hope is for you to know God, find family, discover purpose, and walk in freedom. After the service, begin that process by connecting with a leader and joining our team or a small group. But for now, let's put our hands together and get ready to enjoy this message from Pastor Tony. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. You guys can take your seats. I just want to welcome you to the city. As they said, my name is Pastor Tony, and I get to pastor this incredible church. And I want to welcome all of those who are watching online. Can we give a shout out to our online family, guys? Yes. Do you know we actually have a team of individuals online who are serving people from around the world that don't even live here? We actually have people serving our church that live in other parts of the country, and I think that's pretty awesome, amen? So I wanna thank all of those people who are online. I wanna thank all of you. If it's your first time here, I want you to know that we are so excited to have you here this morning. I believe that God has something for you today. How many of you believe God has something for you, amen? Yes. So I like to have fun at church. I like to clap my hands and smile and, and all that stuff. So elbow your neighbor, say, wake up. Say, I'm here to learn, have fun, and to grow. And I need your help. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Amen, amen. Well, listen, I want to push against your walls a little bit. I want to push against the barriers that you have in your life on this morning by trying to increase your capacity. So I'm going to push on you a little bit because I want you to, to expand and to grow. We got to get out of our comfort and we got to get into like destiny, right? No more complacency. I want to be in destiny. Amen. So I want to kind of talk to you a little bit about what that looks like in your life personally and I want to do that by talking about um, a situation that the Apostle Paul encountered. He had this, like, this, this, he wanted to rebuild the church in Jerusalem. It had been destroyed. And he was going to all the churches, and he was, basically, he was taking up an offering. He's like, hey, guys, we need some money because we got to go to Lowe's. And, you know, everything costs money at Lowe's, right? You know, you can't go into Home Depot and be like, hey, I'm a church, I need materials. They're going to be like, awesome, what kind of materials do you need? And they're going to give them to you, and then they're going to give you a bill, right, whether you're a church or not. So, so he's, he wants to rebuild this church. He's going to all these churches, and then he gets to the Macedonian church, and, and, he, and he actually in his mind is like, I don't know. And I think a lot of times that there are churches all over the world who are doing great things all over the world, and we see them on, on social media or on TV or whatever, and, and, we, and we get to us, we look at ourselves, and we're kind of like, mm, I don't know, right? It's, a, it's amazing what this church is doing, but I don't know. It's amazing what these guys are doing, but I don't know. Everybody say, I don't know, Right? And, and this is exactly what happens with Paul. So we pick up in the story in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and Paul makes the decision, you know what, I'm going to go. I'm going to go over here because I know that maybe everybody else is passing by. Maybe everybody else doesn't know, but, but I'm going to go ahead and put it out here. And I want you to know that God doesn't look and he doesn't pour out based on what we see in a ministry. He's going to give everybody who wants an opportunity to fulfill their destiny if, they're open their, if they open their cup, if they take the lid off of. And, and this is what Paul does. And he says, and now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian church. You know, I could say that the same as, you know, hey, let me tell you about the grace that God has for the city church in Ashtabula. And he says this, in the, in the midst of a very severe trial, 
In other words, I know it doesn't look good on the outside. I know that nobody's trying to move here. Everybody's trying to move away from here. I know it doesn't feel like there are a lot of jobs. I know it doesn't seem like there's a lot of things going on. He says, he says there's something about you. There's this overflowing joy, and you've got, even though you're in extreme poverty, you well up rich in generosity. In other words, if people didn't know where you were from, they would think your condition is not your position. In other words, they wouldn't know how you're struggling based on how generous you are. And he says this, for I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, and they did it entirely on their own. And he said, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people, and they exceeded our expectations. How many of you know that people have expectations on you? And how many of you know you got expectations on you, right? But, but, this, but Paul's saying these people exceeded. They exceeded the expectation. And it says that they exceeded the expectations they gave themselves First of all, to the Lord. So the first thing they did was they committed themselves to God. They were like, God, I'm nothing without you, and I can do nothing without you. So before anything, it's me and you. It, it says, and then by the will of God, they did it to us, the church. And it says, so we urge Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But then he goes on to say, but as you abound in everything, everybody say everything, in faith, so it's not one thing, it's everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. All right? See that you abound in this grace also. In other words, he was saying your condition is not your position because your condition does not determine your capacity. Everybody say capacity. So God is in the business of increasing our capacity. So I want to give you guys the opportunity this morning to see what God can actually do through you. I want to give you the opportunity to be a part of something that doesn't make sense to everyone outside of here. I wanna give you the opportunity to be a part of a movement that God has begun in a place like Ashtabule, like he did in Macedonia, that can change and shift the trajectory of the big church, we call it the big C church, the church globally as we know it. That even in Ashtabula, God could use somebody like you to make an incredible difference, not just in this city, but around the world. Amen? So, so let's talk about that because in order to do that, we got to break through some barriers, mental barriers. Some of us don't even believe it ourselves. We love the church, but even our conversations about the city are bad. Come on, somebody, right? Who we talk about, our family members, our friends, everything is so negative, and we've, we've assumed the spirit that's in the city of poverty instead of generosity, of lack instead of increase. We, we, we've bought into the, the mindset that you can't dream here, but that in order to dream, you got to go somewhere else, and, and, we're, and we're living in this place, but I'm going to kick down the door that's in your mind, and I'm going to let you know that this is fertile ground, and God can use you to do something incredible right here. They didn't believe the Messiah would come from a, be born into a place called Bethlehem and look at what he did in the world. So don't tell me what God can't do in a small place. But when it comes to capacity, now let's be real. Because I was having a conversation with someone. Capacity has been like a conversation that's been around me a lot recently. I've been talking to uh, Doug and Jen Mino, they're going through some capacity stuff. I have them in some training on, and, and I was having a conversation with another guy who was talking about capacity, and this specific guy was telling me, we gotta learn how to be content in our capacity. You know, the Bible says that we ought to be content in all things. And I'm telling you, when he was talking to me, I was listening to him, but there was something inside of me that couldn't agree with what he was saying as it related to capacity. 
that, that you know, he's like, well, you know, we got to learn how to be content. We, we, we got to learn to be able to, you know, it, it's got to be okay. And, and I quickly realized that a lot of people will come into agreement with a mindset like that because a mindset that says if you're content with your capacity means you're comfortable in the place that you're in. And when you get comfortable, you can't grow. And the enemy wants to keep you from becoming. You're not who you were. It's who you're becoming that God wants to, to move. Amen? So, so it's not this past that holds you. It's this future that's in front of you that God wants. And, and I, I know that his heart was right. You know, you got to be content, man. You know, just got to calm down. And I'm like, bump that. Holy Spirit's not telling me that. You know what I'm saying? He's not telling me to be content in my capacity. There are some things I need to be content with, but, but capacity is not one of them. You know, and, 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 and listen, church, because I know right now already this is going to be a good message today. Right? It's going to be good. Come on, say it's going to be good. It's going to be a good message today. Because I do understand that there are some things that I can do that you can't. And I know there are some things that you can do that I can't do. Right? And there are some things that we can't change. Some of us in the room ain't never going to be taller than we are. Right? It is what it is. You know, I don't care how much you fast and pray and believe in God. You know, maybe in your resurrected body you might be a little taller. But today and for the rest of this life, you are what you are. And listen, some of us, I know, you know, we ain't never going to be better singers than we are in the shower. You know, you can love, revel, you know, elevation and everybody else and, and worship can be in your heart. But the reality is, is you got to keep that thing in the shower or keep it in here. Right. And we keep the music up like, why is it so loud? So that we can all sing with our whole heart. That's why it's loud. You know what I'm saying? That's why we do it. Praise God. Amen. Come on, y'all. I like to sing loud. Praise God. But, but the, the things that we can't change are one thing, and, and I know that we all have different gifts, and I know we can't put something if God didn't do something, right? But as important as understanding the gift that's inside of you, and a lot of times we focus on the gift, we also have to understand what our capacity is. And, and now I'm going to ask the question that's going to begin to put some pressure on the wall in your life. How can you know your capacity if you never challenge it? If you never go too far, how do you know how far you can go? See, we don't want that. Say, I don't want it. See, I, I, I like to ask questions like, how can I know what I'm capable of if I never get beyond what I'm comfortable with? How can I know what I'm capable of if I never get beyond what I'm comfortable with? See, I started working out probably about seven or eight years ago because, you know, the numbers keep crawling up. And the birthdays keep coming. Right, man? And I was like, you know, I, listen, I... I want to still look young, act young. I want to be energetic. I want to be able to keep up with students and teenagers and little kids in the back. I want to high five. I want to be able to get down on the ground, roll around on the ground, and not start cracking and creaking when I try to get up off the ground, right? And I started this process and this journey, like, man, I'm going to start working out. I want to look good, you know, for my wife. I don't want to be looking at me like this brother let himself go. I want to keep the flames going, Amen. And, and so what I did was I realized I'm not an athlete anymore, though I'm athletic. The training necessary for my body at this age is different than it was 20 years ago. But I do want a result that looks good. So what I did was I went and got me a trainer, found somebody who looked like they were in shape. Say, hey man, you look like you're kind of strong. I want to be strong. You know, you think you could put a workout together and we work out a little bit. And he got a workout for me, put it together. It's like, yeah, man, we can go to the gym. We started going to the gym. And the crazy thing is this brother put together this workout, and I started working out. We started working out, and he had these, all these exercises and this whole plan, right? But I ain't been working out. And he puts together this plan, and in the plan, he's got like, you know, four sets, 10, 8, 6, 4. Increase the weight every time. And he starts putting all this weird stuff. 
So he, I start throwing, you know, he throws the weights on. I'm looking at it, takes them off. <laughs> Bro, what are you doing? Right? And he's like, come on, man. And, and quickly in the workout, he was like, we got to do 10. I was like, I'm doing five. Right? And he's like, come on, man, you got to do eight. I'm doing four. You got to do six, three, right? And, and, and I, I quickly began to let him know what I was willing to do and what I was not going to do. And then toward the end of the workout, we walk over to the pull-up bar. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, all right, man, we're going we gonna to just finish out with the pull-ups. And then in my mind, I was like, now you know I can't do no pull-ups. <laughs> right? But, my, but on the inside, I was like, well, yeah, all right, we good. So I jumped up on the pull-up bar, did one real quick. Ah. I was like, all right, we good. Went to go do number two, wasn't so easy. Started doing this, and my arms started shaking, and then I did this flip thing with my body and got up, jumped down. I got two. He said, no, man, we got to do ten. I said, you got to do ten. I'm doing two. He jumps up there, 10. Bop, 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 bop. All right, man, you're up. I thought you said we was doing 10. Yeah, four rounds. Did you not see? I did barely one. And he said, hey, man, listen, just get up there, man. I'm going to help you. So I jumped up there, started to pull myself up. And he grabbed my legs and he helped me to do 10. And the crazy thing is, is in two years, we worked out together for two years. And from the first time we worked out where I could do two, by the time we finished, I could do 25 without him. Amen. 25. That's a lot of pull-ups, y'all, at one time. Praise God. If you work out, you know what I'm saying. But, but this is the thing, is when I first came to him, I told him what my capacity was. I'm a two. I can do five, four, three. I told him what I was capable of doing, what I could and what I couldn't do. But what he knew as a trainer is what you need to learn as a Christian. It wasn't my capacity that held me at the two pull-up level. It was my conditioning. See, the 25 pull-up guy was inside of there. But the problem was I didn't want to break any barriers and get uncomfortable to pull that out. And what's happening with us as believers is we're, we're letting God, the church, the pastor, and everybody else know what we can and can't do, and we won't allow God to push down the barriers in our lives so that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. But we preach that. We got it on our coffee mug. My God is. Well, if your God is that, why are you so comfortable? Because let me tell you, if you really believe that God can do that, you would be in an uncomfortable place all the time because you would be anticipating what God would do based on your own imagination. It would shift everything in your life. You would be walking and living by faith all the time. But God's got to move. So everybody say, self I got to move. We got to move. So if I were to ask you the question, I want you to answer this either on your paper, in your mind, or you can write it in your phone. But what is it you have convinced yourself that you can't do that really you just won't do? You're saying you can't, but the truth is you just won't. See, the crazy thing for me is I work with people in and out of the church, and when they come, they always tell me they want to be changed. Man, I need help in my marriage, my relationship with God. They talk about all these things that they need in their lives. They want to be changed. But I find that 90% of them want change, but they don't want to be challenged. So for me, I've got this little quote, and it says, no challenge, no change.
If you're not willing to be challenged, you're never going to change. Christ came that you may have life and have it more abundantly, but he came to challenge the way that you've been because he doesn't want you to stay that way. He wants you to become new, but you can't become new until you're challenged so you can change. Amen? So, so, so you know, we, we, we got to get past, you know, and again, I know I'm pushing on the walls, right? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it's okay. You're not going to die. That's what I mean. You, you know, we, we're like, hey, you know what? But I come to church, PT. You know, I take notes. I touch my neighbor occasionally. I lift my hands in worship. But that giving thing, that tithe, no, I'm not doing that. That serving thing, you know, mm-mm. I'm not doing that. I don't even like people. (laughs) You know that invite thing? I'm not doing that. It's not my job to fill up the church. It's yours. Really what you're saying is, I don't do pull-ups. I want to be in shape. I want something different but I'm not going to do anything different. I don't do pull-ups. See, the thing about me is my challenge is people show up to hear the word of God, but they don't want to be challenged by the word of God because when you come in, you've already set the limitations as to what part of the word of God you're willing to believe. See, I'll believe this part, but not that part. This part's for me, that part's for someone else. But the truth is, it's all for us. So, so what do we got to do, and how can we change? Well, in order to change, we got to be challenged. So what if I was willing to help you? Like, what if I'll help you? Like, hey, I know you feel like you can't do a pull-up, but I'm going to help you do your first pull-up. I just need you to get up on the bar. Just show up, Right? And then I'll grab your legs and I'll help to lift you that people in this building and all around the room will come alongside you and help you to get to the place that you didn't know you could get to. But we need you to come and we need you to show up. What if we help you see something in you that you've convinced yourself is actually beyond you? But to do this, I'm going to show you how they did it in the Macedonian church. So let's take a look at the church in Macedonia because the Bible says it was an impoverished place. I don't know if a natural disaster had hit it, if it was political corruption, if it was, what, I don't know what was going on. All we know is they was on the struggle bus. They were struggling, y'all. It was hard in the yard, right? And here they are, and, and they're struggling. They're low on resources, and Paul's collecting to rebuild the church. And Paul, if you open this and begin to really study it, was actually considering passing by the Macedonian church because he felt bad for them. But what was crazy is where Paul didn't want to demand of them that they give in their current state, there was something in them that demanded they be allowed to participate. There was something in them that said, listen, This may be my circumstance and my situation, but I refuse to stay here. I'm not going to allow this thing to define me forever. Because let me tell you, Ashtabula wasn't always this way, and it doesn't have to stay this way either. But it's going to take a group of people who are going to demand that, you know what? I live here. My kids are here. My grandkids are here. All of these things are here. I'm going to demand that, God, you let me be a part of change here. But that means I got to get uncomfortable. I got to get uncomfortable giving, serving. I got to get uncomfortable believing. I got to get uncomfortable doing. It's going to take me getting out of my comfort zone. I need some of y'all to just randomly sit somewhere else next week. You'll mess some people up. You'll be sitting there, they'll be like, what are you doing? You'll be like, what I mean? I I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you. I wanted to introduce myself to you. My name is Pastor Tony. Right? When we begin to mess people up, 
in the, in, in the scripture says in verse number three, look at it, look at it. It wasn't Paul, it was them. We're, listen, when you begin to pull on me, when you begin to pull on the vision, when you begin to grab hold of the mission and say, listen, we're ready, we're mobilized, whatever you want, whatever dream God has put in you to reach however many people, let's go. Let's go. We're ready, let's go. We need more people, I got you. I got you. I'm gonna go get some more. How many more we need? How many more services we gotta do? How many more? Because I'm not gonna allow my house to be okay because somebody before me didn't do that to me. See, they said, for I testify that they gave as much as they were able. They gave as much as they were what? Able, but then look at what it says. It doesn't stop. Even beyond their what? Beyond what they thought was their capacity. You know what? I did two, and then I did three. I got help with 10, and then I did four. See, they did it, and the Bible says they did it how? On their own. It was them deciding. And, and that verse intrigues me because it started with them giving what they could, but it resulted in them giving what they couldn't. See, some of you want to give this much of your time because that's all I got, man. I'm busy. But what's your time capacity? You know, I, I, it, it's giving financially. I can give $5, but I'm going to go dunking four times this week. Help me, Jesus. Right? You know, I can, I can, in whatever, we, like we, can, we ain't gonna go down that train because we know that that's a path that leads, it's long. And truthfully, it doesn't lead anywhere because I don't care what we have done or what we are doing, it's what are we gonna do next? Amen? Amen. So, so it's only when you challenge your capacity that you discover your capacity. See, I don't want you to be comfortable in your capacity. I always want you to be uncomfortable. If you're close around me, I like making people nervous. Like, I want you to be thinking radically. I, I enjoy it, right? And, and the reason is, is because we do serve a God who can do immeasurably more than we can ask, think, or imagine. But in order for him to do those things that can blow our mind, we gotta get out of our comfort zone. So we're gonna break the boundary of comfort today because too many of us come to church to be comforted in our dysfunction. We're dis dysfunction, dysfunction. And, and listen, God is challenging us to step beyond our dysfunction because he wants to make us new and to give us the power to do what we never knew we could do. But there is something that is resistant in us that when we're challenged, we actually perceive a challenge as a threat. So you're trying to make me do pull-ups because you're trying to embarrass me because you know I can't do them. So you're trying to embarrass me. It's, it's a threat. So you're trying to challenge me in my, in my time, make me feel guilty. You're trying to challenge me with my giving. Well, you don't know my bills. You're trying to challenge But, but the truth is, it's not a threat when you understand God has a promise. See, when you understand that God has a promise. And when I was putting this message together, I started to think of the things that I never thought I could do that I'm now doing. Literally, I get the privilege of going around this nation to preach the gospel to people who don't know Christ. I can remember the most terrifying thing for me was not preaching the word, but was doing a salvation message after the word because I take your eternity so serious. And I didn't want to mess up a moment that could determine the trajectory of your eternity. And now I'm seeing God last year in 2023 that there were over 1,500 of your family members, your friends, and people in this community who came to Christ just last year. And that was not, I never thought in one year 1,500 people are gonna come to Jesus. I don't even wanna pray the prayer. 
but I got uncomfortable. I got uncomfortable. And when I got uncomfortable, God began to increase my capacity. I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say it loud. How will you ever know your capacity if you always insist on your comfort? How will you ever do 25 if you're not willing to start with two? See, the Macedonian church started with what they had, and God increased their capacity. It says they gave as much as they were able, and then they gave beyond their ability. See, all of us come into faith with this little box of what we can do and what God can do. And we bring God our limitations in that box. But when we're met by the low level of our own expectations, what happens is we end up becoming disappointed and we assume that our God is limited. That's too big to pray for. It's too much to believe God can. See, the, the truth is, it's not that God is limited. It's the fact that we've kept our lid on top of our capacity. And because we've placed the lid there, we have been un unable to see what God can do through us. It's okay if we see him do it through others. But we just don't believe he can do it in us. There's no reason that teenagers who can be madly and passionately in love with God get up, preach a message, and the room be shifted because of the anointing in you. It's already in there. It's in there. But do you believe it's in there? Or do we want to just be comfortable? So let me get ready to kind of wrap this up. Because I think for most of us, we're just waiting for the right time. And we throw words, this is Christianity for those people who are not, who, who this is your first time, we like to Christians use these words. You know, we got these words like, you know, how are you? I'm highly favored and blessed. The world says, how you doing? I'm good, man. You know what I'm saying? We got these words and we, we like to use things like, well, it's not my season. Huh? It's not your season. It's not my season. And we use that as an excuse not to get uncomfortable. But the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11, and listen, some of y'all need to take a picture of this. And look at what it says in verse number four. Farmers who wait for the perfect weather never plant. You keep waiting for the right time, and the right time never shows up. And before you know it, two years pass by, three years pass by, four years pass by, five years, six years, seven years, 10 years, 20 years, and you're still in the same place. And nothing has changed except when you get to your deathbed, you're telling those people that are around you, I wish I would have. But when I get there, I'm going to tell them I did it. I did this, this, and this. Life was good. My marriage was good. My kids were saved. Da -da 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 -da. And I'm going to tell them, and this is how you do that. This is what you need to do if you want to live a fulfilled life. If you want to live a life of joy, peace, and hope. A life that goes beyond your capacity. But we've got to shift. We've got to shift. Everybody say shift. So we can't wait for the perfect time because the Bible says if they watch every cloud, they never reap. When's the time to plant? All the time. It doesn't matter the season. It doesn't matter what it looks like. God's ground is good ground, and he's good all the time. It doesn't matter where you are. But it's time to reap. But you can't reap a doggone thing until you sow. You hear me? That's a little bit too much for some of y'all on this side of the room. Y'all know what I'm talking about over here? Yes. Amen. They said, you heard me. Where are you from? Ashtabula. Praise God. <laughs> because we got to get out of if I would or the if I, I would if I. 
You know, Pastor, I would. I've had people tell me, look, Pastor, if I win the lotto, I'm going to build you whatever kind of church you want. And I'll be looking at them, and now, you know, you know, when you get older, you say what's on your mind. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, no, you ain't. I said, man, listen, if you can't give $10, you think you're going to give me $10 million? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's, if I could, I would. If you could, what do you mean? You can, but you won't. You can, but you won't. Paul said the Macedonian church couldn't, and they did. And when they did, they could. See, you say if I would, if I would, if I could, but faith says you could if you would. See, you could forgive if you would forgive. See, you, you could have joy if you would rejoice. See, see, you could be free if you would be free. See, you could step out if you would step out. You could move forward if you would let go. See, you will when you do, and when you put it in his hands, he'll multiply it in front of you. But as long as you have an excuse, the enemy will always have you boxed in, and the boundaries around you will never expand, and your capacity will always be there, but it'll never be fulfilled. So let me say this, and I'm done. And I want you to really think about this. Your ability to believe will never catch up to God's capability to perform. You'll never get so ridiculous up here that God will be like, well, we can't do that. But you can't just think about it. You gotta be about it. Listen, I know a lot of people who want to be in shape. But I only know a few people who actually go to the gym. You could dream about what you would look like. Man, if I was in shape, I'd wear this. I'd have this on. I'd wear a midriff. I'd, you, you could say whatever you... But until you step out, until you take a step, it is your imagination. But God doesn't do imagination. He does dreams. And he doesn't do dreams just to do dreams. He does dreams as a precursor to reality. But you have to push over the boundary Increase your capacity. Step out in faith. Listen, Pastor, I don't know what I can do. I feel like I hate people, but listen, if you tell me there's somewhere to serve, I'll be here. Because you know what? You might think you don't like people, but once you get around the right people, you would be like, man, I love these people, Pastor. I'm so glad that you got me with these people, man. You know they were praying for me. You know what I'm saying? You know that they were, right? You know, Pastor, I didn't have anything. I was barely making it, living paycheck to paycheck. I started giving and man, listen, stuff just started happening. Financially, breakthroughs and stuff was happening. It didn't make any sense. You got to get uncomfortable. You got to get uncomfortable. So what I want to do today is I want to challenge your capacity. And I want to suggest that your current limitations that are in your life are really a result of your conditioning, not your potential. See, I believe that you have good hearts, just bad habits. See, those bad habits won't allow you to experience the life that God has intended for you to have. So it's time to take a look at the limitations in your lives and declare, you can't hold me any longer. I'm growing beyond. And I'm doing this in accordance to the promise that God has made to me. They don't define me. He has. And he has called me royal. 
He has called me his own. He has chosen me. And he can do all things. Amen? Stand to your feet. Come on. So church, what are the things in your life that you have labeled as contentment that really are complacency? What are the things you have come to live with that are just okay and you have agreed to? When did you stop moving and start questioning and putting conditions on God and his church? See, when we stop pursuing him, our heart goes cold. And what happens is atrophy begins to set in. And the joy that we had when we were walking by faith begins to disappear and discouragement sets in. See, we've got to keep going because the very life that we have been given hangs in the balance. You are great and mighty, called and anointed, chosen, handpicked by the God who created everything. When he was walking by, he didn't pass you by. He said, I've got something unique and special to you. But can you get past your limitations? And believe with expectation that I'll blow your mind, do things in you and through you that you never even imagined were possible. Pastor, I don't think I ever could do what you do. Why? We're all called to build the kingdom to grow his church. Listen, Easter's three weeks away. We've got four services. And I actually told somebody, I don't want to wait for Easter to fill the church up. I need the people to invite people to church and fill the church up before Easter so that the people who come can see, you don't have to just come on Easter. We do this every week. God is moving every week. He's doing things every week. And he's choosing people every week. So next week, like, man, look, don't look like a lot of, come at 8.30 and bring somebody with you. Come at 11.30. Amen? Because I'm asking you to help me. Help me. And I promise you, just like in that gym, it didn't feel good, but it was worth it. It was worth it. It'll be worth it. Amen? Why don't you close your eyes and bow your heads? If you know that you have allowed complacency and comfort to set in, and you know in your heart that there's more in you, there's a greater capacity, there's a greater dream, There's a greater move that God has for you. And today is the day you just need to step out into that thing. If you're here and you know that where you are is not the end, but probably the beginning, I want you to just lift your hand up and say, there's more, Pastor. It's me. You were talking to me today. It was me. Well, I want to pray for you. So with all those hands that are lifted, keep them up. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, God, for every person whose hand is raised, who knows, God, that their their faith and their capacity is greater than what they're experiencing. I pray that right now, God, that you would give them the courage when they leave here to continue to believe in the dream greater than what they see today. I pray, God, that you would challenge them, God, in their inviting, 
that they would be on a mission to grow your church. I pray, God, that you would give them a zeal to give, a zeal to serve, to do whatever it takes, God, to shift this region and to build your kingdom here in the earth. So, Father, I pray a blessing over every person, every family, every man, woman, and child, that you would stir up that gift that has been lying dormant. You would give them a pace for this place so that they can walk in that promise that was established so long ago. Father, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Thank you for tuning in today. I hope the message made a difference in your life. Make sure you click the subscribe button. And if you feel like one of your friends could use this message, please share it with them as well. And I want you to know that if you wanna support this ministry, you can support this ministry through our giving, which there's a link right below that you can click on as well. But either way, we wanna thank you for being a part of our church family. You're making a difference and God has an incredible plan and future for you. So I can't wait to see you next week. God bless you and be the city.